কম বড় জিতেন হাজরিকা স্যার head of the department of statistics dibugar university um, he already had two sessions with us so i first um, express my sincere thanks to him for giving his valuable time to us uh, thank you sir uh, in this session dr manav sputim bromon sir will also join with us uh, very shortly uh, very soon he will be in the session after three break they both will the uh, deal with the topic categorical data correlation and regression analysis theory and practical now professor jitan jitan sir will uh, deliver his speech sir you can start now thank you uh, mondita thank you but uh, now also participants are less only 76 participants are there uh i have uh, got uh, more than 100 participants on last session so it is going to increase anyway uh, anyway they will join uh, no problem uh, some internet connectivity problem may be there and uh, actually uh, i am going to start with the yesterday some questions regarding the certified random sampling and quota sampling whether the two participants are here or not i am not sure uh, uh, they, they can indicate also uh, they are here or not uh, as an uh, no oh. uh, so what is the different random sampling i again repeat uh, one of the participant asks what is the difference between the different random sampling and simple random sampling in simple random sampling whole population we consider as a units in the whole population are considered as homogeneous mm-hmm. we take a part by the scientific way that is using random number table or any other way we can take a part from the whole population units from the sampling frame oh. we can select from the sampling frame according to we can uh, collect the information according to that uh, the sample we can collect the information from it may be household to household or it may be some materials to materials and so on now uh, in the simple end of sampling that is only one strata or otherwise you can consider only one strata is there whole thing we consider as a one single strata from that strata we collect some information that is called stratified uh, simple random sampling in stratified random sampling so many stratums are there according to population characteristics according to research objects objectives we have to classify the, the, the whole population into some sub groups that means units in the one sub group are homogeneous as possible and units from one sub group to other sub groups are heterogeneous for example if you differentiate it male and female one is male another is female in case of simple random sampling male and female whole thing is whole thing is mixed up and you can draw a sample and that sample may be over represented by male or over represented by female under represented by the counterpart so uh, there is a chance of over representation and under representation in case of simple random sampling but 
if all are boys, all are equally performed, then you need a sample that from the boy, only boys will come. From the girls, only girls will come. So uh, they are homogeneous. And uh, if, with respect to some other characteristics, they are saying, so only girls are coming or only boys are coming. If the population is of boys, then if you collect the boys, then as uh, a sample, then automatically boys are coming. But if it is a mixed up, then boys and girls both are there. If you do not stratify it, then all boys may come or all girls may come or few girls may come or few boys may come. That may happen in case of simple random sampling. In stratified random sampling, that problem is overcome. How overcome? We stratify the whole population. That is, we divide the population into some subgroups. From each group, proportionally, we will take some small sample so that to tell some, to tell us some of the small sample is equal to the required sample. Some of the suppose one sample is 10, another is 14, and 24 plus 26, then three. Three stratums are there, total is 50, and your required sample size is 50, and 50 is divided into three parts. So that from each stratum you have to take to get that this. Now quota sampling. In case of quota sampling, almost same as stratified random sampling, but it is a non-probability sampling. In case of stratified random sampling, each sample is drawn, small sample is drawn from each stratum, separately and randomly, that is using statistical random numbers table or any other scientific technique in order to get the required sample. But in case of quota sampling, if you are able, uh, able to get the target, your target, that is quota, then you can stop it and according to your convenience, you can take the sample from each data. So it is called quota sampling because your aim is only that quota, not the strata, not the, that stratification. You are not so much interested with the stratification. You are interested with that quota. If quota is fulfilled, then you can stop. Like some, with respect to some characteristics, like stratified nano sampling, you can divide the population into some quotas, not some quotas, some strata, some subgroups. From each group, you can take according to your convenience. According to your convenience, you can take some samples and that, that is nothing but non-probability sampling because without using random numbers table, you can take according to your convenience. Yes, uh, uh, for example, human being. In case of human being, you are from this group, this, this, this person can do the work. Okay, we can send them. This is a sample, but not a, a, a probability sampling. Similarly, from other group, this, 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 this persons can do this work, so we can send them there. So from each time you can send from one group male, another group female, another group, another, some other categories uh, with respect to your objective, then, uh, then that is called, uh, this one is called quota sampling. So quota sampling and stratified sampling, in some sense, it is same. In both cases, which divide the population with respect to some characteristics in the, some homogeneous groups. But in case of stratified random sampling, we, ha we are drawing the units using random numbers table or any other scientific technique. That means probability sampling. In case of quota sampling, it is not probability sampling. According to your judgment, according to your convenience, you can take some units from each data. This is the different. I think now it is clear. So now come to the today's presentation. Today's presentation, in, if any, any other query, if any other query, you can, uh, for whole three sessions, all three sessions, you can ask at the last. So now let us come to the, some other, uh, some statistical tools which are used in our uh, social science research also, and any other in including our studies. So here, uh, correlation, regression, and categorical data analysis. Actually, regression is used in categorical data analysis. Correlation can be used also in categorical data analysis. And some other techniques are also there we can use in categorical data analysis. 
some of that we have mentioned in the earlier session, thus I will repeat and I will remember you what are the things. Now, correlation. What is correlation first? Correlation means the question of first two variables come. Starts with two variables, at least two variables, more than two variables, multiple correlation and that type of correlation is there. Today we are discussing only simple correlation. When the question of correlation comes, two variables come. And that two variables should be correlated. That is related somehow, somehow related. Not necessarily cause and effect. One is called cause, another is effect, not necessarily. Cause and effect may be there. This is the cause, this is the effect. Then they, they, that two variables are related. But not necessarily cause and effect. Correlation, like this, if one variable value increases, for example, age increases, then to some extent, up to the some ages in a small part, age increases, height also increases in the same direction. When age increases, height also increases up to the level of, suppose, as I said, 10 years or like that. Age increases, height also increases in the same direction. One variable and other variable in the same direction. It, like in economics, demand, price, supply, price. When price increases, supply also increases. When demand increases, uh, uh, that is price, uh, when price increases, demand decreases, like that. So uh, there is a relation. One increase, other also increase. One increase, other may decrease. Ultimate, there is a relation. There is a relation when one increase, other also increase. When one increase, other may decrease. Not necessarily one increase, other also increase. One increase, other decrease. Or one increase, other may also increase. Next, one increase, other also same rate increase. One increase, other also same rate decrease. Or one increase, other also increase, not in the same rate. It is slowly increase. That type of situations are coming in the, our real life situation. So, the relationship between two variables such that one variable change in one variable results in a positive or a negative change in other variable. Also, a greater change in one variable results in corresponding greater or smaller change in the other variable is called correlation. That is, one variable change affect the other variable also. The amount of correlation, that is degree of relations, a correlation is the degree of relationship between two variables. It will indicate some value. That will specify what is the degree of the uh, what is the degree of the uh, degree of the relationship between two variables. In the on the other hand, regression analysis says about the nature of the relationship. One for degree of the relationship, another for nature of the relationship. Regression says about the nature, correlation says about the degree of the relationship. Degree means when one increases, other also increases in the same rate, and degree is high. If one increases, other also increases, but it is slowly increases, that degree is low. That in the same direction, so it is positive. And if one increases, other also decreases, not increases, other decreases in the same direction, and also degree is high. But degree is negative because one increase, other decreases. One increases, other also, other decreases, but very slowly. When it increases one from 10 to 20, other decreases from 10, uh, 10 to 15, uh, no, 15 to 10, in the same range. Then, it is a low degree of negative correlation. So uh, there are different types of correlations, uh, that is positive correlation, negative correlation, and uh, also sometimes we say zero correlation. 
positive correlation. So here the values of the two variables deviate in the same direction. Either positive, either increase, one increase, other also increase, or either decrease, one also decrease, other also decrease from one to other. That is the increase in the values of one variable results in a corresponding increase in the values of the other. For example, height and weight. Then the height increases, weight also increases. But uh, not necessarily, it may both decrease. Positive correlation means both in the same direction. I have given the example of increasing, it may be decrease also, but both should decrease. Both should decrease, but it may not be in the same rate or may not be in the, uh, may be in the same rate. Negative correlation, here the decrease in the one values of one variable is that the corresponding decrease in the values of the other variable. For example, uh, uh, no, no, negative correlation, here the decrease in the one values of the one variable is that the corresponding not decrease, it is wrongly written. Please correct if, if you get it, this correct it. Here, the decrease in one values of one variable result in corresponding increase in, uh, in values of the other variable. One is this direction, other is this direction. It is wrongly written, wrongly written in negative correlation. When one increase, other decrease, not but, in the same direction. That sorry, is can called, you please, can yes? you please sense the slide? Okay. It's in the first slide only. First slide. Yes, sir. Uh, you are showing the first slide only. Not change. No, sir. Lights are not change. No, sir. Not change. But I am changing. In my screen, it is the uh, same. Okay, I will check it. Did it change? Now? No, sir. It is what the first you have uh, seen? Types of correlation, positive, negative? No, no, sir. Only the first slide. That is the title. Oh, what happened? What happened actually? You can reopen it, sir. Yes, I have reopened. Is it working now? No, sir. You will have to share the screen. Okay. You close it. And then, okay. Is it working now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now okay. Now okay. Thank you, sir. In negative correlation, uh, in my slide, there is uh, wrongly written here that decrease in the values of one variable result in corresponding not decrease, corresponding increase. One increase, other decrease. In case of positive correlation, one increase, other also increase. One decrease, other also decrease in the same direction. So uh, these are uh, positive and negative, linear correlation. Corresponding to a unit change in one variable, there is a constant change in the other variable. Unit change means, suppose it, it is in the thousands of rupees. 1,000 change means, 1,000 change means, what will be the change in the other variable? Suppose demand, demand change, that change is constant from 1,000 to 1,000 to 1,000. 1,000 to 2,000, 2,000 to 3,000, 3,000 to 4,000, that is called linear correlation. And nonlinear is if that, 
that type of constant is not there. That is called nonlinear coordinate. So uh, there are different types of correlations. Uh, that is the, the positive correlation, negative correlation, and uh, linear correlation, nonlinear correlation, and so on. Now, correlation and causation. Already I have mentioned correlation, causation implies correlation, no problem. But correlation does not imply, may not imply causation. There is correlation, it does not imply that there is causation. Causation implies correlation, but converse is not true. Correlation always, I will ask to have an idea about the degree or direction of the relations. If it is positive, we can say positive correlation. If it is negative, we can say negative correlation. Degree is negative with some value. Value indicates the degree, value indicates the degree, and sign that is a positive or negative sign indicates the uh, direction. Positive means positive direction, negative means negative direction. And degree and direct direction of the relationship between two variables, but fails to reflect upon the cause and effect relationship between the variables. Cause and effect means x is cause, y is result. X is cause, y is result. Y is the outcome. You cannot say like that. Not always. If the two variables are correlated, does not imply that x and y are causally related. Not that. I will give, in case of simple regression also, it is linked to correlation. I will give one very good example to you that how we can predict one from others, but it is not a cause and effect, cause and effect relationship. In medical science, some cause and effect relationships are there. In that case also, correlation is possible. Correlation and causation are same in that case, but not always. Correlation does not imply causation. Causation always implies correlation. Now, the question is why the correlation between variables may be uh, due to what are the reasons? One is mutual dependence. The phenomena under study may inter influence each other. It is observed that in data relating to economic and business situation, for example, price of a commodity are influenced by the forces of supply and Demand. So automatically that, that two are visual dependent. So when one increase, other may increase, or one increase, other may decrease. Both the variable being influenced by the same external factors. A fairly high degree of correlation may be observed between the yield per hectare of two crops, say rice and potato, due to the effect of number of factors like favorable weather conditions, fertilizers use, irrigation facilities on each of them. But none of the two is the cause, cause of the other. Your chance, sometimes it is chance, it is not in, in our hand. When one increases, the other also increases. Due to what reason, I, we do not know. That is completely chance, that is random. We do not know. Now, methods of studying correlation, these are the uh, some techniques, one is calculation coefficient of correlation, these are familiar to you, it is also called covariance method. Spearman rank correlation, it is for rank data, qualitative data. Scatter diagram method, it is nothing but a graph only. Two-way frequency distribution table also. And there are other concurrent deviation method and many other methods of correlation, studying correlation there. Yeah. And for non-parametric also, we have shown uh, some other, uh, not Spearman, Spearman and Carl Pearson. One is Carl Pearson, and in case of non parametric, we use Spearman. And I have mentioned in the last session. So, uh, what happened? These results, these results will come automatically by the software if you enter the data correctly and if you click in the proper place, you will get the result. But what is the interface? You don't, uh, you forget about the calculation formula. This is the calculation division, the coordination division formula. There are many ways of writing this formula. You forget about this formula. And you forget about this uh, rank method. In rank method, this is D is the what? Rho equal to one minus six. One is, we use R and rho. This is the symbol rho. 
rho equal to 1 minus 6 summation d square divided by n into n square minus 1. This stands for defined within the pair of ranks of the same individual in the two characteristics and n equal to number of pairs. And right. rank may be actual rank may be given, or if it is a quantitative data, you can start from smallest to largest or largest to smallest, giving rank. Highest value rank one, next value rank two, next value rank three, next value rank four, and so on. But for the both the variable, your same rules should be followed, same di direction. If you have started from the highest to lowest in variable one, in a variable two also you have started from the highest to lowest. Same direction you, you should follow. Now, okay, sir. Uh, slides yes. are not changing again. Again? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now it's working. Yeah. Now it is okay? Yeah, yes, sir. Actually, what is the interpretation of that correlation coefficient? What is the interpretation of correlation coefficient? If r equal to plus one, then there is perfect positive correlation between them. That means when one variable changes, values of the one variable change, other variable also change, change in the same rate. Same rate. That is perfect positive correlation. You will get exactly one. One change, other also change in the same rate. Minus one, that is perfect positive means direction is same. If one change from increase, other also increase. One decrease, other also decrease, but in the same rate, decrease is in the same rate. Then this is called perfect positive correlation. If I equal to minus one, then there is a perfect negative correlation. One increase, other decrease, but in the same rate. One increase, other decrease in the same rate. Same rate. In, in, in case of negative correlation, I again repeat in slide one uh, wrong line is written. And if I equal to minus one, then there is a perfect negative correlation between the variable. If one increase from 10 to 20, other decrease from 20 to 10. Same rate, same rate, then this is called perfect negative correlation. If R equal to zero, generally we say that there is no correlation. Actually, uncorrelated. Actually, it is not correct. There is no linear relationship. There is no linear straight line type relationship is not there. Some quadratic or some other type of relationship is there. So better to say no linear correlation. No linear correlation, not no correlation. Zero correlation does not imply no correlation. Zero correlation implies no linear correlation. No linear relationship between that two variables that has that. This is a common mistake uh, by the our students also, and I ask also, and then if R equal to zero, we generally say that there is no correlation. No correlation means they are uncorrelated. But there is no linear relationship is correct between the variable. However, if R equal to zero, it does not imply that the variables are independent. There may be dependence. Dependency is in the sense what? Y equal to x squared, not y equal to a plus bx. So in generally, but R you cannot get R equal to one, or you cannot get R equal to minus one, or R equal to zero. You will get R lies between minus one and plus one. If R close to one, then we say high degree of positive correlation. If R close to minus one, opposite direction, minus one, then we can say there is close negative, a uh, high degree of negative correlation. If it goes to uh, low, then we call, we say low degree of positive correlation, low degree of negative correlation, depending on it is positive or negative. Now the question arises, if R equal to 0.6 or 
or 0.5. What is the difference? Because you are going to deal with a sample, what happened in the population? Are you equal to 0.5? Is it implied that in the population it is 0.5? Are equal to 0.4? Is it implied that in population it is zero? There is no correlation because due to only a small part of data, it is shown that R equal to 0.4. R equal to 0.4 is shown, but in the population it may not be. In the population it may be zero. Zero means very close to zero, right? not exactly zero, very close to zero. There is no relationship, linear relationship between that two variables. Then, how to take decision in this part? So, question of statistical significance analysis. There is a test called T-test for testing of correlation also. Here the hypothesis of interest is, we say that in the population, there is no linear relationship. That is no correlation in common, commonly used as no correlation. R equal to zero. That means in the population, R equal to zero. There is a test statistics T. In the software also, it is available. You find a correlation between two variables if samples are random. Again, I repeat, if samples are randomly drawn, put the sample, you find out the correlation, you make the test of significance for that. And if test of significance says if p value is less than 0 0.05, as I have told in the last session, if p, p value is less than 0 0.05, you can reject the hypothesis that r equal to zero. R equal to zero means there is no correlation between two variables in the population. Then you can say. That, that then you can say about the difference. First, you have to establish that there is correlation between the two variables under study by test of significance. Using test of significance plus value, you can conclude. Without test of significance, you cannot conclude. If your sample is not random, you can find out correlation, but you cannot go for test of significance. Thus, you can say there is some sort of positive correlation. There is some sort of negative correlation. You can say that. From the value, from the degree, then you can say that there is positive correlation or there is negative correlation. But uh, without testing, you cannot say that there is uh, uh, correlation. There, first, there is correlation. There is correlation, then positive. Point four, you have got, or point three, you have got. Sometimes article of point five, you have got. But that point five does not imply in the population there is point five. In the population, it may be zero also. It may be zero. Sometimes 0.4 may be significant, but 0.5 may not be significant. In the population, it is zero. That may happen. So test of significance is possible. So in this case also, your sample should be random. If it is your random sample, then you can apply that test of significance, that later part. Or otherwise, in text finding case, you can calculate only correlation. And just you can conclude that there is some sort of positive correlation. They are positively related, correlated, positively correlated. Just you can say tell me. And these values are given by the software. No problem for that. Hmm. And using scatter diagram, scatter diagram plotting uh, one variable, uh, one uh, like in a uh, school level. Uh, 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 you can get this type of graphs in in a x axis uh, one value and y axis another value. You see when here in a first graph when x increases y also increases and positive correlation and this is the high degree of positive correlation. Second one is x increases y also increases but it is uh, not uh, scattered not scattered to the straight line. It is uh, this part it is scattered so moderate linear correlation last one third c it is a weak linear correlation because they are more scattered same is the case for negative correlation in the first first uh, that is d diagram d you see part that this seem to be perfect negative correlation if it is in a straight line then it is perfect negative correlation you will get minus one one increase other decrease one increase, other decrease. In the diagram D, you see one increase, other decrease. Next, also one increase, other decrease, but they are dense. And we next one is more dense. That is called weak linear correlation. 
second one is called modern linear correlation. But both are negative. All are negative. Second diagram, all are negative. And first one is positive. And one alone, Z, is a zero linear correlation. That means no correlation. Generally, we say that wording is not correct. No linear correlation. No linear correlation in the Z, diagram Z. Z says that no linear correlation. So they are completely fractured. Then, but this is an idea usually using graph, just idea about the variables under study. But this is a scatter diagram method. Using this method, you can have some idea. That diagram you can draw easily using statistical software, no problem. Statistical software, SPSS, using SPSS, you can draw these diagrams, no problem for them. But you can have an idea. You cannot give a value like 0.4, 0.5. Or that you have to take the calculation solution coefficients. And if data are in the attribute characteristic rank, rank in, in, in our sometimes we will give A, B, C rank. So A is one, B is two, C is three, like that. One, two, three. We have to convert in numerical figures. Then rank correlation. In rank correlation, also it is like between minus one and plus one. Thus formula is different. It is derived from the other formula. No problem for that. So Data diagram already I have explained. Now comes the regression. Regression, generally, we are going to predict, we are going to predict one value of the variable with the with the value of the other variable. We are going to predict y with the help of x. We are going to predict, for example, Electricity consumption with the help of with the help of temperature. I think it is possible. In the in June, July month, when temperature increases, electricity consumption also increases. Electric consumption also increases. I will come later on again that example. That example is an interesting one. The term regression was actually first introduced by Francis Galton. It is in the anthropometric measures in anthropology, anthropometric measures. And you see, now you are going to publish a research paper in Copas Journal. But this paper was published in Proceedings of Royal Society London. It is a proceeding, but value of the paper is now also, it is more valuable. It is, always it is a prominent one so far. Now, uh, uh, but we dislike now proceedings. There are two reasons. Some proceedings are actually good, but some proceedings are not hard or not uh, examined by the experts. We should take only that papers, those, those who are eligible for public. Due to that two reasons. So why, as a whole, we are going to generalize it, all proceedings are bad. Not all proceedings are bad. Keldon found that although there was a tendency for all parents to have tall children, it is not correct. On average, tall parents and for short parents to have short children, this is our idea that But you have seen in your day-to-day -day observation, all tall parents, tall, tall parents have no tall children. All short parents have no short children. On average, ultimately they will come on average. There is an average relationship. Tall may be short, short may be tall also. That is, in, on average, we will get a relationship. By taking sample, they have found that tall does not imply tall, short does not imply tall. On average, tall and short, if you mix up, then you will get a one result. So, Ultimately, that is another, parallelly another work was there, that is Galton law of universal regression was confirmed by another scientist, that is Carl Pearson. And he published this, his work in a famous journal of biometric Napoleon. 
biometric error. It was a very famous journal in statistics. Now. So, uh, we found that average height of sounds of a group of tall fathers was less than the fathers' height, and average height of sounds of a group of short, short fathers were greater than their fathers' height. Thus, regressing, thus regressing, regressing the tall and short sounds alike toward the average height of all men. All men, in other words, uh, this, there is a, uh, he found an average relationship between that using y, x, we can calculate. Regression analysis is a so modern definition. Regression analysis is a statistical technique for investigating or modeling the relationship between variables. It concerned with the study of dependence of one variable, the dependent variable, one on one or more other variables, that is explanatory variables. Independent variables also we can say are explanatory variables because one variable is used to explain the other variable. So why it is called explanatory variables, another one is called dependent variable is also called explained variable. Explained variable and explanatory variable. In other words, explanatory variables you can say as predictors, predictors. Predictors and other one you can say as predictant, predictant. Dependent variable also you can say as predictant. If there is a cause and effect relationship, then one is cause as cause, another is effect. X is cause, Y is effect. If there is a cause and effect, not always cause and effect relationship. So our aim is to predicting the value of one variable with the other. It is a average relationship between two variables. Knowing x, you can find the y. Knowing x, you can find the y. Sometimes knowing y, you can find the x. So you can estimate y with the help of x. Now, what are the uses of regression? First, data description. In the first or second one as a session, I have told that if you write one to 1,000 data in a paper, then there is no meaning. Instead of that, if you use some modeling, that this type of data are there. This data follows this. Two variables data are there. If you are able to say that there is a uh, data are like that, knowing x, you can find the values of y. Y equal to twice x plus three. If you add three, two times x, then you will get the y. Then you can, in a very brief, you can describe the data using regression. So this type of data are there. Parameter estimation. I will show that is y equal to a plus bx or y equal to a, 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 a two regression coefficients are there. We estimate that two parameter. And more than two parameters may be there in multiple regressions. Prediction and estimation. Yes, we can predict y using x. We can predict age, uh, pre predict uh, height using width. You can, we can predict weight using height. Putting the value of height, we can get the value of width. So that is a prediction or estimate. And control, we can control if there is a cause and effect relationship in medical science suppose. This one is the cause of this regression analysis says. Then controlling one, you can control the others. If this, this particular medicine has effect, you have shown that there is a side effect. Then controlling that medicine, you can control the side effect also. Or using dosing, uh, dose control. You can control. And sometimes, if the variables are related in a causal manner, then you can use as a control. Control means we can control something using regression. So these are the broad, in broad sense, this is the application of regression analysis for data we, in order to describe the data in a compact form, parameter estimation, prediction and estimation, and control if the variables are related in a causal manner. So predictor is electricity consumption during June, July. That example, you let us come. Response, maximum daily temperature during June, July in Assam. Now, is it a cause-effect relationship? 
Is it a cause? That, is it possible to reduce the maximum daily temperature by curtailing electricity consumption? Suppose today, today I have stopped all the fans in my home, everything, and freeze. Can we? Can we reduce the temperature? Definitely no. We cannot reduce the temperature. We can stop everything, electricity appliances here. Off, everything off. But in my home, temperature is also reduced. No, but there is a correlation. There is a regression, positive regression, positive correlation. That when temperature, electricity consumption and temperature, maximum daily temperature, electricity consumption increases, you can find out maximum daily temperature also increases. Electric consumption increases means daily temperature also increases during particularly hot season. Now, you can predict, you see, you can predict maximum, uh, uh, now the question arises, what is the utility of this model? It, it has utility. What is the utility? Maximum daily temperature, you do not know. Tomorrow's maximum daily temperature, you do not know. But you have got the result of electricity consumption early. Temperature is not known, but you know the consumption. There is over already. Knowing consumption, you can predict maximum daily temperature. This example, so many other examples are there. So knowing electric consumption, you can find the maximum daily temperature. You can predict response using predictor. Predictor means electric consumption during June, July. So ele using electricity consumption value, you can find out what is the maximum daily temperature using regression analysis. But you cannot say it is a cause and effect relation. Curtailing electricity consumption, you cannot reduce the maximum daily temperature. It is not possible. Maximum daily temperature reducing by curtailing consumption, it is not possible. So, uh, sometimes it may not be cause and effect. Sometimes it is may not be cause and effect. But it is useful for predicting, for estimating. Knowing what, we can know what. Without knowing others. Knowing X, we can know Y. We can predict Y. Without knowing Y, we can find out. But this does not imply that X is cause, Y is result, Y is effect. There is no cause and effect. That, that may not be cause. So it is clearly a doom to failure. It is seem to be clearly a doom to failure. But for what purpose failure? Cause and effect relationship purpose failure. As a whole, regression analysis is not failure because for prediction purpose, you can use. So it is not always correct. Now, what are the steps in regression analysis in statistical softwares? You first decide the potentially relevant variables. I am telling about two variables, three variables. In your socioeconomic studies, so many variables may come. And you are going to study the impact of one variable on others. So many other variables. Impact of one variable, so many other variables. That is one is Y, other is others are excess. Excess means X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, it may be up to X15. Now, from your mind, from your expertise, you have to decide what are the relevant variables here potentially relevant variables in your study from the past experience or from your observation with justification you have to decide what are the variables required for your study so it completely depends on expert in the area of the study you are going to study the impact of one variable on the other variables on the other variables so other variables how you, you have to choose how can you choose that decision you have to take with the with your expertise or with the help of expertise of that particular area so i have shown that i have already told that it is a collaborative work not a single person work so 
we have in statistics person we have to take in case of medical sciences we are, we are doing many work but always we have to take help of medical person because some variables are coming whether this variable is important for regression analysis or not because whether this variable may have uh, the dependent variable impact maybe on the other. This, this, this variable may, be, may have impact on the dependent variable or not. In diastolic blood pressure or blood, simply blood pressure, these, these are the variable. This particular variable has greater impact on that uh, blood pressure or not. If doctor says or physician says that, no, not at all. It is responsible for that. So you can omit that variable. So only relevant variables you have to take. Then according to that variables, you have to collect the data. According to, you have to frame the question. You have to frame your question in that you collect the information. Then you have to specify the model. Model specification itself is a hypothesis. It may be y equal to a, a plus b x1 plus c x2 plus c x3 because so many variables are there. But no need to go for that. Only you have to choose the variables, only you have to collect the data. Software will do everything. Model specification and everything because in case of model specification, you have to uh, think of SARS of many, many models. But today we are discussing about linear. Choice so of then fitting of the model, you have to fit the model. Earlier, you have to fit the model using calculator, you have to calculate. But now, it, I have given in the bracket some methods, OLS, OLS that means ordinary least cost method, MLE, maximum likelihood, estimate, generalized least cost method, regression method, principal component method, so many methods are there. Generally, statistical software user utilizes in regression model fitting maximum likelihood estimate for method, MLE method. MLE method, it has some advantages. So MLE method utilizes by the statistical, most of the statistical software. So uh, statistical software are based on MLE methods. So we can go for MLE method. Now, but, uh, no need to go for MLE method. Software will provide the, your result. Then model fitting will come automatically. Uh, model fitting will come automatically. And then next part, model validation, that is residual analysis, that will come in the software. And you can take the decision. Last part is your part. Then, so in brief regression analysis, univariate only one quantitative response variable. Multivariate two or more quantitative response variable. In simple, only one predictor, only one independent variable. Multiple, two or more predictor variables. Predictors that two or more independent variables. Generally, in social science research, we are going for multiple linear regression. Because you can take a one variable, dependent variable, others may be a large group. So many variables may be here. If, if two variables only, one is dependent, another is independent, it is a case of simple regression, simple linear regression. If you are thinking more than two variables, two or more than two variables as independent variables. One dependent is there, that means three variables. Starting from three, dependent, independent two. Starting from three, that three, it is called multiple regress. Then linear if all parameters are equations are linearly related. That means x1, x2, x3, not x1 square, x2 square, x3 square like that. Or e to the power x, not like that. And non-linear, you are not so much interested. Analysis of variance, all predictors are qualitative variables. Sometimes qualitative variables are there. Analysis of covariance. And another one is the important model is logistic regression model. Here, sometimes uh, we are going to uh, study the dependency of one variable to other variables, but that variable is qualitative in nature. That is categorical. In that case, logistic regression model comes. So, suppose this is the regression model. Y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus a rotor. Epsilon means a rotor. Last one is a rotor. Then, apply OLS method. 
ordinary least square method or maximum likelihood estimation method you are able to get the values of beta not and beta 1 b not and b1 suppose b not and b1 that yellow color b not you are able to estimate the values of b not and b1 using statistical software then what you will get y equal to beta not plus beta 1 x then error term omitted after estimating error term omitted because there is a approximate relationship now exactly actually y equal to not uh, it is not possible beta not plus beta 1 x some error is there always so i have written that error part. our aim is to minimize the error in all methods mle and ols method we are going to use that epsilon last part error part we are going to minimize it. some techniques are there we are ols method and mle method and any other method we are going our aim is to minimize that error then if that error is zero then y equal to exactly beta not plus beta one x so beta not value and beta one value is suppose two and three two plus three x so if you put the value of x you will get the value of y two plus three x suppose beta not equal to two beta one equal to three two plus three x if you know the value of x then you can find the value of y so predicting y knowing the value of that is the use in uh, planning and others in by uh, For example, weekly family consumption, Y. Weekly family income, X. That is weekly family consumption, Y, equal to beta naught plus beta one weekly family income plus zero. Estimated model, what we have got? 24.4545 plus 0 0.5091 weekly family. If we put weekly family income, weekly family income here, this one, this one we, weekly family income, then weekly family, knowing weekly family income, this one, you can find out that weekly family conduct. If you know the family income, you can find that family consumption because 24 and these are known. Now, what is the meaning of that beta one? That is 0 0.0509. That is called one unit change in weekly family income. That is, if it is in thousand, what will be the change in weekly family consumption? That is the interpretation. The constant term represents the average level of weekly consumption expenditure, whether your income increase or not decrease. You have to spend some amount for weekly consumption of expense. Consumption expenditure is there. That is 24,454. When weekly income is zero, that means income, no income. We assume that income is zero. Then you will get 24 point. You see, when X is zero, weekly family income is zero. You will get this part zero, uh, second part zero, estimated model. And you will get 24.4545. Why it is we have written as thousand? Because it, units are in the thousand. So 2000, uh, 24,454 is the weekly income. Uh, weekly consumption expenditure if there is no income at all because there is no income at all means income not increased not decreased that type of cases or we can assume that income is zero but you have to spend for that expenditure then the but income zero is always not meaningful in some account mathematically it is correct now uh, the coefficient of weekly family income represents the change in weekly consumption expenditure for each rupees 1000 change because these units are in 1000 1000 change in income from the data given we estimate that an increase about 509.10 because the coefficient is 5091 so it it is in thousand if 509.10 for as each additional rupees 1000 change in income 1000 change in income 509 say, rupees 509 he is going to spend more if 1000 increase income 509 increase in the expenditure that is the meaning from the coefficient so uh, quickly i i will uh, I, I will cover with categorical data statistics with categorical data i have already shown uh, the discussed about the categorical data categorical data information that can be stored in categories. It may be nominal, dichotomous, that is two variables, binary also, dichotomous means binomy, binary, binomial. And for example, age, it is ordinal. Gender, it is nominal, male and female. 
diagnosis normal abnormal nominal improvement mild moderate fair ordinal locality rural urban semi urban nominal anxiety score it is ordinal from 13 13 to 24 24 to 20. these are some ordinal scales you can give as 1 2 3 4 5 in this situation this is these are categorical data either male or female either drug user or not user either smoking having smoking habit or not smoking habit or uh, uh, either uh, improvement that improvement may be mild moderate or fair three categories that may be ordered and locality it may be nominal rural or urban or semi urban these are some categorical data that in this case of categorical data you can find out frequencies of frequencies means in the category of this how many persons are there in the category of this one how many persons are there male and urban how many persons are there there are two categories suppose for gender male and female and locality there are what rural urban and semi urban your aim is to say whether a particular situation depends on locality and gender or in other words whether locality and gender are independent or not association of attributes whether there is association between locality and gender so far as particular study is concerned then gender has two categories male and female locality has how many categories three categories rural urban and semi urban then you will get a two by three table one for male and rural another for male and urban another for male and semi urban next female for rural female urban female semi urban you will get two by three table means six figures there so uh, number of how many variables are present that is a question number of dependent and independent variable number of categories in the categorical variable and whether pairing is available in the data variable or not then you can go for chi square test in categorical data suppose whether smoking habits and a particular disease is, has association or not is it positive having smoking is it positive no smoking is it negative smoking this is negative no smoking you will get a two by two table. then you can use just chi square test but in case of epidemiological studies there is another concept that is called odds ratio odds ratio concept is there and relative risk concept uh, concept is also there and uh, and these are the some tests these are available in the statistical software multivariate also these are some now what is the odds ratio and relative breaks odd is the what odds ratio means ratio of two odds what is odd happening of an event divided by not happening of that event. happening of an event divided by not happening of that ratio of two odds is called odd ratio happening of an event in a particular group divided by not happening of that, that event in that particular group divided by happening of an event not happening of the event that ratio in another group if both are equal then you will get one that means that odd of same event happening of same event is in the two groups are same if one is greater, then you will get greater than one. Otherwise, you will get less than one. So, the hypothesis of interest testing is odds ratio equal to one. Not odd, odds ratio. In a group, they are not using smoke. They have no smoking habits. That is, you can take as a reference group. In the reference group, you calculate the odds. How to calculate the odds? Happening of an event. How many are suffering from the cancer, lung cancer? Not happening of that event. How many are not happening? Persons are there. You have 100 persons. 30 persons are suffering from the lung cancers. And not uh, it should not be 100. It should be, suppose, uh, 5,000 out of 5,000. 
that divided by 5,000. Uh, not happening is what? Then 5,000 minus part. That is 4,000 uh, sum. So that is odd. In the group, what? Those who are no habit of smoking. Another group, they have habit of smoking. Happening of an event, how many are suffering from the lung cancer? Divided by that, other persons not happening of that event, you will get a ratio. That is odd. If you take ratio of these two odds, you will get what? Odds ratio. Odds ratio. Generally, we say odds ratio equal to one. When it is what? There is no difference. That means there is no difference. Now, I have to see one means there is no difference. Odd ratio equal to one means whether he is a smoker or not smoker, there is no possibility of cancer. That means smoking is not the cause of cancer. In the, both the groups, odd is same. To some extent, numerical calculations, some values may be different, but statistically, these two are same. Happening of the event divided by not happening of the event, that is odd in the reference category, that is non smokers category, divided by the odd of smoking category, those who are using smoke, that smokers, smokers, that ratio equal to one means that cigarette smoking is not a cause of lung cancer. Because in both the groups, it is same odd ratio. If it is greater than one, yeah, and it is in the, the, the second category is in the upper side odd ratio. Advanced category is in the below side, always top, lower side than the denominator. Then what happened in in the in the those who are exposure of the, that uh, smoking? Then in that group, in that group, uh, that frequency of lung cancer is more. Now also you cannot. You have to go to a test of sick. There is a test of significance for odd ratio also. Dr. Manak will show after this, uh, within this session, uh, after the tea break, he will show how to say, test it, odd ratio, regarding odd ratio. So odd ratio is the what? Ratio of two odds. One odd happening of an event divided by not happening of an event in a particular group. Another happening of the event, not happening of the event in a Exposure. Some other reason also, not necessarily in medical science, social science, other case also, that odd ratio concept can be used. Hmm. Used, and there is a test of significance. This is nothing but the cash test of significance, odd ratio, or odd ratio also. And this is a odd ratio. Another measure is generally in medical science used, that is, uh, if odd ratio one, it indicates increase of chance of an event. Odd ratio less than one indicates decrease of chance of an event. Odd, odd ratio always that exposure to be in the upper side. So it get, greater than one means what? It indicates increase of chance of an event. Less than one indicates decrease of chance of an event. But due to the sample also that may happen. So why you have to go to the test of significance whether in the population it is correct or not. So use of confidence interval also you can use and uh, that will show by the uh, by hormone and relative six. This is also same thing likelihood of happening of an event if have all possible events. You see in the uh, denominator all possible events are there. Here only not happening of that event is there. Not happening of event is there here, but odd in case of odd in relative risks relative risks. All possible events, all possible, all, all to tell. So one is rate, another is ratio. One is ratio, another is rate. So now you, you take this example. Consumption of extra salt and hypertension. We are going to say whether there is a association between hypertension and consumption of extra salt. Those who are taking extra salt have more chance of hypertension or not. Extra salt in, the, in their food. We do with their food, lunch or dinner. Now, yes, 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 104. Yes, yes, 104. What is the meaning? Those who are using extra salt, 
and hypertension, 104 persons. Those who are no extrasol habit of taking extrasol, but hypertension, 39 patients. Next, those who are taking extrasol plus no hypertension, 56. No extrasol, no hypertension, 128. So, there is two group. One is yes, no. Another side also hypertension, yes, no. Now, odd ratio. Odd ratio is in the first group, that is yes group, from consumption of extra salt. From that side, you see, left hand side. Consumption of extra salt, yes group. In yes group, what is this? 104 by 56. Extra salt, no group. Not taking extra salt. This is the reference category because there are no habit of extra salt taking. Uh, we are going to find out uh, the persons having uh, extra salt taking are. Uh, the, 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 is there any chance of high, more hypertensive cases? This is not the cause. Other some causes are also. This is not only the cause. No category. No category 39, 128. So 39 by 1. So all is A by B, second all is what? C by D. We, in the bracket, we have given A, B, C. So what happened? Ultimate A, D, B, C, that is simplification. 104, then you will get what? Odd ratio 6.09. In software, we will provide you the result by putting the death frequency. 6.09. That means it is greater than 1. It indicates 6 times more. It indicates Individual extra salt consumption are 6.09 times more likely to be exposed to hypertension than uh, those who are not taking extra salt. It is not the correct one. This is a hypothetical figure. If it is six times more, all the participants will uh, from today, they will stop extra salt taking. You take extra salt, no problem. Some of you may have low hypertension also, low, uh, low pressure also. So you take extra salt, no problem. I am not a doctor. Hmm. I am not a physician. So that, that is not example. Just uh, I am telling it. That meaning is if it, if it is, we will get this 2.09. It is 6.09. But if it is 2.09, you will get the two times more chance of having hypertension compared to that no, those person who are not taking extra salt in their common foods. That is the situation. And generally, extra salt taking, taking is a one of the cause of hypertension. It is carrying. Now you see, extra salt taking is only not the cause of hypertension. Some other causes are there. Then question of regression analysis comes. Because here, two variable study, you can do like this. Or you can use chi square table also here. Chi square test of association of activity. Also, you can use. Same conclusion you will give. Now, hypertension may depend on so many other variables. But hypertension is what? Either yes or no. Either zero or one. The person is in the hypertension group or not hypertension. Either hypertensive or not hypertensive. Either one or zero. This is a categorical data. In such type of data, regression analysis is different. In that case, if dependent variable is of this type, having hypertension or not having hypertension, then you can go for logic regression model or linear probability model or probit regression analysis, depending on that situation. Generally, logic model is useful. <coughs> hypertension is dependent variable, and so many other independent variables are there. This is a two variable study, by way study. If more than variables are there, multiple variables are there, then you have to go through the regression analysis that in case of categorical data analysis, that is one of the model is logic regression model. So relative risk calculation A by A plus B, because in ES group, we take A to tell is what? A plus A, A by A plus B. Similarly, we will get in a no group 39 by 39 plus 120. That is related. So by the logistic regression model, there are many important research topics for which the dependent variable is limited. Values are limited. For example, 0, 1, 2, three categories are there, 0, 1, and 2. 
four categories are there one two three and four in that situation it lies between what one two three and four there is no variability in that other because statistics deals with variability if there is no variability no question of statistics so uh, one two three four only four categories are there you will get in case of dependent variable all values are one two three and if in male and female then you will get zero and so in such type of situation we have to go to some special technique of regression analysis if dependent variable is a categorical variable if dependent variable is a dichotomous only two characters and uh, two uh, either zero or one either male or female either hypertensive or not hypertensive it depends on extrasol taking it depends on age it depends on other medicine use it depends on other disease so many variables you have to take care of. that all the variables may have impact on hypertension then the question why question arise which variable has more impact compared to the other then you can some balancing is there by the medical person so hypertensive i am going to explain with that only single example hypertensive cases may depends on so many variables but dependent variable can take values only two either hypertensive or not hypertensive you have collected information from 200 person 200 person he is either hypertensive or not hypertensive in that case hypertensive and not hypertensive and all are this hypertensive cases are depends on so many other so there is a question of regression analysis right? this, this type of situation deals with logistic regression right? whether or not a person smokes or drinks for this outcome is not continuous it is not a continuous variable there is no question of distribution of normal so it is a binary variable So uh, there is a linear probability model y equal to zero and one only, and and this type of situation you see, and we generally not prefer linear probability model. We prefer logistic models. Why logistic model? Because logistic model shape is that R one. Because for example, suppose you have whether you have a own house or not, it depends on income and some other value. You have own house or not? You are a young person. You have own house or house or not? it depends on income plus some other variable but when your income is very slowly increased then there is chance of there is chance of increasing of getting own houses also slow then gradually increases then directly straight line then gradually again after getting money 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 you are not going to construct your own house again and again again and again ultimately it takes a bit So this is the shape of the logistic regression. So we use that logistic regression function. This is the logistic regression function in our model. Some calculations, conversion, ultimately we get that a linear model. That is the logistic regression model. And uh, here also, all these p by one minus p, p is the probability of happen, probability of accessing the scooter. It may depends on some incomes. Probability of happening of the event. That is hypertensive cases. If it were not a hypertensive cases, this is a one minus p, and that is for a particular group, particular group, and another group again you can calculate p by one minus p. That is reference group, those who are not habit of that smoking or extra salt taking. That the for that also you will get p by one minus p. This p by one minus p and other p by one minus p you divide. If you will get it one, then Extra salt taking is not a cause. Otherwise, it is. For each variable, you can check in case of regression analysis. One by one, you can check each variable. But in case of others, uh, in chi-square test or uh, odd ratio concept, only uh, in the preliminary part, you can check only one variable. Here. You have to take again and again. Using logistic regression model, you can take all the variables at a time, get together. so uh these are the some some actually uh, uh, the over overview of the regression analysis in categorical data analysis and in uh, in our uh, uh, i have already answered some queries of the earlier sessions and it may be more also uh, 
we have, I think, was not so much time. And uh, but we can use uh, at least five minutes for this, and then another part after after only five minutes break, uh, Dr. Manakodi Barman will continue. And finally, uh, I have a comment uh, for this. Uh, before that, uh, let us uh, any question from the participants. Not today's session only. Yes, sir. Uh, the participants can ask any queries if they have any doubts. Because it is the last session. Doubt is always there. In the analysis, it is not possible to online. You said where there is energy. uncertainty. There so is many statistics. doubts are there. Yeah. But yes, uh, at least in a specific doubt, uh, those who are using regressions, they can point out. Otherwise, not possible. Okay. And Today I am not in a Maruti. Now I am in. Uh, I was in Innova, actually. Hmm. Uh, still no question in the chat box. Under the participants are there. Yes, sir. Uh, queries from earlier. Any queries? Helpful now to be asked. Can we use Tobit regression for categorical data? Uh, which regression? Tobit. Yes, sir. Logit or? Can you repeat that question? Can we use Tobit regression for categorical data? Yes, yes. We can use these all models are for categorical data, but depending on the situation, we can use and some residual analysis and some techniques are there. Which model is suited for what purpose? And uh, actually, better to choose all the uh, all the uh, variables which are suitable for a particular purpose seem to be suitable. Then you choose one which one is better than the other using the uh, results of statistical software. Some results are coming. Using that result, you can compare the, which one is better than the others. Sir. Uh, there is another question. Uh, no questions? Yes, sir, no questions. OK. Uh, Sir had three sessions with us, and today he. I have a comment. Yes. I okay. have a comment. Finally, I have a comment. Yes. As you see, Stephen R. Convey, light a match, and it can destroy a building or give light to a dark place. It's your thoughts. Statistics is subject is like that. It depends on if you you can destroy a building or you can light a dark. Our subject users. is like that. Yes. If misuse, not proper use, then it will give a misleading results. In election time, generally we have heard some news that the opinion poll is not correct. These are statistical only. No, due to wrong use of statistics, it is wrong. Due to if used correctly, then it is correct. Not used correct. So uh, our subject is like that. Light a match, it can destroy a building or give light in a dark place. It's your source. This is uh, from Stephen R. Conway. Oh. Hmm. So uh, I suggest all the participants, those who are not from the background of statistics, Please take help of statistics person. And at the same time, my appeal to the statistics person, please don't show your expertise. You work as a colleague, not as an expert. All are friends. This is my last comment. Now, Bondita, you can go. Sir, another question from Horen Somwa. Uh, he yes. asks why the correlation of coefficient lies in between plus one and minus one. Plus one and 
minus one. Ah, uh, actually, uh, I have shown one formula. That is a uh, two variables covariance divided by root over variance of x variance of y. That result mathematically we can prove. That proof is not easy to show here. Now, uh, if it is in the board, then we can show it. It always mathematically true statement. It always lies between minus one and plus one. It cannot exceed plus one. It cannot. Less than minus. It lies between plus one and minus. It is mathematically proved. The result is mathematically proved. So we, our conclusion is: if close to one, there is positive correlation. Close to minus one, there is negative correlation. And exactly one, perfect positive correlation. Exactly minus one, perfect negative correlation. That means perfect positive means one when increases, other also increases in the same direction. One decreases, other also decreases in the same direction. Perfect negative correlation means one increases, other decreases in the same direction and same rate, same rate decrease. One increase, other decrease in the same rate. Then it you will get minus one. In practical situation, plus one and minus one is not possible. You may get 0.97, point minus 0.97, and so on. So it is mathematically proved result that minus it lies between minus one and plus one. It is like there is a theorem. We can prove it. We can show it. It cannot exceed one. It cannot ex go to beyond minus one. And if you get in your calculation, if a uh, uh, hands calculation, if you anything get greater than one, your calculation is wrong. If you get get less than minus one, it is your calculation is wrong. I am sure that your calculation is wrong. Otherwise, it is not possible to get greater than plus one or less than minus one. So mathematically proved result. It is a mathematically proved result. There is a theorem, and I am not going to prove it. And uh, if they are belonging to statistics, participants are belonging to statistics background, then we have to prove. It. Then we have to prove it. Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, the, <clears throat> I think the participants are immense, immensely benefited by this session because they are writing that this information is very informative, very uh, excellent, and very important. They are writing these kind of messages. This uh, is just starting. This is starting. Um, sir, you have spent lots of your valuable time with us. Thank you so much. We hope to hear from you in future also. Uh, yes. We have lots of uh, lots to learn from you. Uh, yes, you have exactly said that it is the beginning. Uh, so I express my sincere uh, thanks to you uh, for um, spending your time with us. Hope to meet you again. Um, thank you, sir. I so, hope. I hope yes, uh, physically uh, yes, next sir. we will meet physically the participants. <laughs> uh, then that will be more interesting. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, now the participants, we have a tea break for ten minutes. We'll meet here again. Please don't leave, uh, don't leave this room. We'll be in the same platform after ten minutes break. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
sir uh, please wait for a moment because the host will have to make a co-host to share your slide Hello, I'm going to share screen of the program. Host disabled participants uh, since caring will be Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello? Pandita, <laughs> Bonita, uh, Sara host bona idea soon. Are to be secure. Sara host bona idea to me. Very funny, you have to look at. Can we start? Am I audible clearly? Yes, okay. What was it, sir? Oh, okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today is our last class. 
So today, actually, we will discuss, uh, I'll show you uh, how to do the methods that are already discussed by Hazarika sir in SPSS. So uh, I'll show you first how to do cal correlation in SPSS, okay? Uh, what is correlation? Correlation studies the relationship between two variables. And it studies the direction of relationship between two variables. Suppose if one increases, other will increase or decrease like this. Okay. So it shows the direction of relationship. So suppose I have two variables. One is systolic blood pressure. One is diastolic blood pressure. Suppose I want to know whether with the increase of systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure will increase or not. I want to see that. Then what I have to do, I have to go for correlation. It will give us the relationship between two variables, okay? So, uh, the, so that the variable may be related or not, we have to see it by correlation. So first of all, we have to go to analyze, then correlate, okay? Then we have bivariate. We have only two, we want to see the relationship between two variables. That's why we have to use bivariate correlations. So let's click. No, we have to, so this is the window, uh, this window comes. We have to select both the variables and put it here and click OK. You see, this is the relationship. This is the chi-square. Oh, sorry, this is the uh, correlation. This is the correlation. It's a actually a matrix. It's a two by two matrix. Uh, so this is the correlation. This is the SBP and this is DBP. This is the correlation between SBP and DBP is 0 0.802. That means, and it is positive. The sign, bit, uh, sign, is, sign of the correlation between the two is positive. That means if systolic blood pressure increases, diastolic blood pressure is also going to increase. And the relationship between both the uh, SBP and DBP is high. Okay, so it shows the relationship between the two variables. Now let us try one, some different relationship. Okay, so we can draw it, uh, we can draw a scatter plot also for this. Now let us see, suppose we uh, open the original database. Some Suppose I want to see the relationship between age and income, okay? This is the age variable, this is the income variable. I want to see whether with the increase of age, income is also increases or not. I want to check it, okay? So for that, I have to go to analyze, correlate, okay? Then bivariate, the, then we have to select the both the variables, age, age of the person, then income. Click OK. And this is the result. This is the result. So what is the correlation between these two? It is negative. It shows a negative relationship between. You see, this is negative. OK? That means if one increases, the other will decrease. So this, this gives us the relationship between two variables. Correlation gives us whether with the increase of one variable, the other variable is going to decrease or increase. OK? So now let us talk about regression. Uh, correlation gives us the relationship between two variables. Regression gives us the strength of relationship between two variables. Okay. Uh, so suppose, actually Hazarika I already told you about this thing. Suppose I have a regression model Y equal to A plus BX, where Y is the dependent variable and X is the independent variable. So uh, we have to study how much this X depends on Y. Sorry, sorry. I, I, we have to study how much this Y depends on X because Y is the dependent variable and X is the independent variable. We have to check whether how much this Y depends on X, how much these values of Y are affected by the values of X. Suppose we have taken an example. Suppose we have taken dependent variable as systolic blood pressure and independent variable as diastolic blood pressure. Okay, so dependent variable is systolic blood pressure and independent variable is diastolic blood pressure. And these are A and B are constants. So uh, we will always have the data on the dependent variable and independent variable. Always we will have the data 
data on dependent variable and independent variable. And by using the regression analysis, we have to estimate the values of A and B, okay? We have to, these are the, un, this is called the unknown constants, okay? We have to estimate the values of A and B by using regression model. It is usually used uh, least square method or maximum likelihood method by using this, this method. We have to find the values of A and B. This is not given, this is unknown. But um, what we have given to us, systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure, these two values are given to us and we have to estimate the values of A and B by using the regression model. Okay, now we have considered what is our dependent variable. Systolic blood pressure is our dependent variable and diastolic blood pressure is our independent variable. Uh, so we have, we have to do a regression model by using systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. So this is the model, this is the data. So this is the dependent variable. Systolic blood pressure is the dependent variable and diastolic blood pressure is the independent variable. So we want to see how much the diastolic blood pressure influences the systolic blood pressure, okay? So for that, I have to go to analyze, then correlate, sorry, regression. First analyze regression. So first of all, we have to go to analyze, then regression, okay? Then linear, you see linear. So this is a linear, you, you see here, this equation is a linear equation, okay? It's called linear equation. So we have to go to linear, analyze, correlate linear, click here. So it is very easy now. We have space for dependent variable and independent variable. So we put systolic blood pressure is our dependent variable, put the independent variable and diastolic blood pressure is our, is an independent variable. So, oh, sorry. That it is not here. Uh, I have to move to another database. So this is the database. So we have systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. So I have to select and go to analyze. That is regression, then linear. Then we have to move systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure in the place of the independent variable. Okay, then click OK. So the result is this. So this is the model summary. Model is it's point R is 0.64, R square is 0.641. This is the R square. It shows how well the model fits the data. This R square, it shows how the model fits the data. So if it is zero, it, it lies between zero and one. If it is close to zero, then you can say that my, this data does not fit the model well, okay? So there is no use of regression. But when it increases and it close to one, then we can say that uh, the data fits very well with the model and there, the results are fruitful, okay? So this shows the model summary. Then, then by using the ANOVA also, we can test whether the data fits the model well or not. We can study the fitting of the model. So it's significant p-value is 0 0.005. So that means the model fits well with the data, okay? Now this is the main table, uh, coefficient table. You see here we have two constants. These are, these are the two constants. These are, this is for first one is constant and for DBP is 1.22, okay? and you see uh, t, t value, I think has already told you about this. The significance of these parameters are, both are significant. That means both the, uh, this the DBP is significant. That means we, ha we have to consider that DBP have no relation uh, in regression model. We consider that uh, the, D, the independent variable has no relation with the dependent variable. But here we see that P value is significant, is less than 0 0.05. That means we have to ex reject the null hypothesis and say that the diastolic blood pressure has a relationship with systolic blood pressure, okay? Now, these values, these two values are very, very important. These two values are very, very important. This is A, in our regression model, this is A, and this is B. 
So what is A? A is 21.946 and the diastolic BP is 1.2. So you see the model. You see the model. You see, this is systolic blood pressure is 1.2946, 21.946 and diastolic blood pressure is, and the B is, A is this and B is this, okay? Now, what is the interpretation from this? The interpretation is from that, this, this A, A is called the intercept term. A is called intercept term. This A1, A is called intercept. So in this case, intercept is 21.946. Intercept means if the influence of the independent variable is not there, what will be the value of the dependent variable? Okay. Uh, now, suppose, uh, I, I have a, a model, suppose it will be like this, suppose I have a model, suppose rice production, okay, equal to A plus B into, suppose rainfall. So what is A means here? A means if rainfall is not there, what will be the value of rice production? If a rainfall is suppose zero, then what will be the value of the rice production? That means if rainfall is not there, some production will be there. No? So uh, with, with the increase of rainfall, the production will be increased, but without rainfall, there will be some production. It may be low. So the A shows that value. If the value of the independent variable is zero, if this value is zero, if there is, if influence of this variable is not there, then what will be the value of the depend, uh, dependent variable, okay? If we don't consider the value of diastolic blood pressure, then systolic blood pressure will be like this, okay? So this is the case. And what is this 1.2? 1.2 is called the slope. And it interpret like this. It means one unit increase in diastolic blood pressure, the systolic blood pressure is going to increase 1.2 two units, okay? That means what? If, if your diastolic blood pressure increases, suppose from 90, suppose one person's diastolic blood pressure is 90, okay? And his systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure is suppose 90, DBP. DBP is suppose, DBP is suppose 90, okay? And SBP is suppose, SBP, is suppose 140, right? Now, from this regression equation, we can interpret that if di diastolic blood pressure of that person increases to 91, if it increases one unit, it was uh, uh, earlier it was 90, now it increases to suppose 91. Then what will be the value of systolic blood pressure? It will increase one, 0.2 unit. That means it will increase to 141.2. That is the really that is the interpretation of the slope. That means if one unit increase in x, one unit increase in x, how much unit in increase in uh, y? B now units increase in y. So originally suppose 90 a person systolic blood diastolic blood pressure is 90. His systolic is uh, 140. If his diastolic blood pressure increases by one unit, that is from 90 to 91 it increases, then the systolic blood pressure is going to increase 1.2 unit. This is the interpretation of, it shows the strength of relationship. That means if the, your independent variable increases this much, what will be the amount of increase in the dependent variable? So it shows the strength of relationship between correlation and regression. Correlation cannot show you the strength of relationship. It shows the direction of the relationship. If X increases, Y increases or not, that the that direction, if it increases in the same direction or different direction, that will be so that can be shown by regression and correlation analysis. But the strength of the relationship can be shown by regression analysis like this way. So B is very, very important. B is called the slope. It shows the one unit increase in X. What is the increase in Y? Okay, I think you understand this. And we can uh, do multiple regression also. So this is only one variable. If I have more than one variable, suppose. Okay, suppose B, X1, B1, X1. Suppose 
like this b2 x2 plus b3 x3 like this suppose suppose uh, suppose systolic blood pressure not only depends on diastolic blood pressure but a number of variables suppose age also a important factor with the increase of age blood systolic blood pressure may increase or uh, suppose uh, bmi also is a factor with the increase of uh, weight the, uh, the systolic blood pressure may also increase so the uh, so same way in the uh, rice production uh, uh, example rice production may not also depend on rainfall it depends on the fertilizer amount of fertilizer use amount of manpower involved so lot of factors may affect the dependent variable okay so in that case we have to apply multiple regression analysis okay so multiple regression analysis can be done in the same way go to analyze so regression linear okay so suppose i want to see what is the relationship between sbi as a dependent variable no this not the, the, the this this uh, this this cannot be used because this is a binary variable now we have created a binary variable whether a person is having esb systolic blood pressure or not this variable cannot be used as a dependent variable so you see this is the variable and this is this has only two categories zero and one we need this variable which has the continuous variable we, okay so for binary variable we have logistic regression if we want to use this variable as a dependent variable then we cannot apply simple regression model, multiple linear regression model we have to go for logistic regression i think hazurika sir already told you about logistic regression so if you have this type of continuous variables then you have to go for multiple regression analysis if you have dependent variable as only categorical with two categories zero and one yes or no then we have to go for logistic regression so now we are going we are talking about multiple regression analysis so we have to use this model so go to uh, regression then linear then put this systolic blood pressure then suppose we have age we have income we have bmi here in the independent variable we can give both depend categorical data or continuous variable we in multiple regression model that dependent variable must be continuous okay and but the independent variable may be categorical also sex is a categorical variable now it has two categories zero and one we can also give this as a independent variable no problem so in in multiple regression model the in, in the independent variables can have both continuous and categorical variables but the dependent variable must be continuous okay so i have given all the variables right i have given all the variables then click okay this is the result here you see r is very very small is very close to zero that means it the, the model does not fit well here r square is very small okay so the results are not very fruitful so okay r should be close to one r should be more uh, if it is better if it is more than 80.8 so here you see r is very close small so it will not give us very good result so you see also it that here uh, the from the anova we got that the results are not significant it more than 0 0.05 that means uh, our null hypothesis here that the model uh, fit does not fit well with the data but here you see um, we have to accept the null hypothesis that the data model does not fit well with the data okay you see this is not significant okay now these are the beta values age of the respondent is point Zero, zero, 009 that means if your age increases by one unit systolic blood pressure will increase by how many unit 0 0.001 0 0.009 that means suppose one person his systolic blood pressure is 130 his age is 21 years if it moves to 20, uh, 21 2 years one unit increase then his systolic blood pressure will be 130.0009 and same can be interpreted uh, like this also the others can be interpreted the same way also 
but you from the t uh, t statistics you see that these are not significant that means this does not have any influence on the uh, dependent variable okay so this is the way you can do regression analysis now let us talk about categorical data analysis okay so i have talked about uh, correlation and uh, correlation analysis and regression analysis now we have to go for categorical data analysis okay so you see we have uh, in excel in the first class we have made a frequency table like this this is a what two by two table it has both rows and columns in the rows we have education in the columns we have gender so these tables are called cross tables, two by two table, two way table, or uh, or contingency table. Okay. This this table is also called four by two table, five by two table. Why five by two table? Because it has five rows: one, two, three, four, five. Five rows and two columns. That's why it is called five by two table. It is also, it is called cross table, continence, five by two contingency table. There are five rows and two columns. That's why it is called five by two tables. We can have two by two tables also with two rows and two columns. Okay. So uh, uh, for uh, doing categorical analysis, we have to use this type of tables. Okay. So I, I'll show you how to make this type of tables in SPSS. Oh, for that, suppose I'll show you, this is a categorical variable, no? systolic blood pressure is a categorical variable. It is a categorical variable, okay? So it has two categories, zero and one. Now we have to use this categorical variable, this one, okay? So go to, uh, suppose, I'll, I'll, I'll make a first one by one table. So, uh, systolic blood pressure, this one. Click OK. We have already shown how to make this type of table, a one way table. So, this is the one way table. So, uh, there are to tell how many people, 300 people out of that. How many people have the blood, uh, have SBP? 33 people. 11% people have systolic blood pressure okay suppose i want to know out of this this 33 people con co contains both male and female okay it, it is the group of all the individuals so 33 group 33 people contains both male and female so i want to know how many males are infected from the disease and how many females are infected from the disease so if i want to make the breakup then i have to go for two by two table for that i have to go to analyze then descriptive statistics, then cross steps. This is the cross step option. We, can, we have to use this cross step option. So I have to go to analyze, then descriptive statistics, then cross steps, okay? So this window comes. Here you see we have a provision for rows and columns. So we have to select. So here you see, here we have in the column we have given sex gender and in the rows we have game given education okay so we have to specify which which category we have to give in the rows and which category we have to give it in the columns right so so you have to specify it so suppose this is the categorical variable sbp so i have, I have given sbp to columns okay and suppose sex to rows click ok Okay, so this table is not necessary right now. So this is the table. This is the table for okay, square table, you see. So there are how many people? Yes, how many? Yes, the, in this columns, we have systolic blood pressure, two categories, no and yes. And in the uh, rows, we have gender, male and female. So it's a call it two by two table. It has two rows, two columns, right? So now you see, now you see uh, there are 32 people who are in yes yes means have the disease out of that 11 people are from rural area and 22 for uh, sorry 11 people are female and 22 people are male 
Okay. So what is this? What is the interpretation? There are 33 people who are infected from the disease who are yes in this category. And out of this, 11 females are disease people and 22 females are disease people. Now, from this table, can you say which group is more infected from the disease? Can we say that? Which, which group uh, is more infected from the disease? Which group? I think everybody says that it will be male, okay? But you see, you see, uh, 22, uh, 22 female, uh, males are infected, but out of how much? Out of 142. And uh, how many females? 20, 11 females are infected out of 158. It will be difficult for us to interpret because the total number of figures in both the cases are not same. If it is same, then it will be very easier. So I'll make one more table, you see. Suppose I want to make it for uh, location. So go to, go to analyze descriptive statistics, cross steps. Then suppose I, I want to do it for location, suppose residential status, okay? So this is the table. Now, which group is more infected from the disease? You can have a clear picture from this table. You very easily said that it is, it is the real people who are more infected because the number is more. But, uh, but out of 228 people, okay, this 24 is coming from 228 people. And this nine is coming from only 72. So it will be very very difficult for us to say which group of people is more infected from the disease. If, if these two figures are same, if the denominators are same, if, if this, these two are figures are same, then it will be very easy for us to say which group is infected, okay? But the, this nine, the, there, the number of urban people is less, but it is coming from only 72 people, nine people, okay? And uh, for real people, 20, there are more people in the rural area, but the total figure is also high. That's why we cannot say that which group is more, more uh, infected from the disease. So to solve this situation, we have to use percentage. If I use percentage, then I can make both the denominators, these two figures, same. That means we, we can make them both 100. Total figure, we can make at 100. So we should use percentage as a measure. So how to use percentage? You see, go to analyze, descriptive statistics, cross steps, okay? Then this is already there. Then you have to go to sales. Then you see here, percentages are there. This is the percentage. So we have row percentage, we have column percentage. So I usually prefer to give row percentage. That that will uh, is uh, mean, uh, it, it is depends on the situation also the type of the data. Uh, I, I usually prefer row percentage, so it will give us a very good interpretation. So uh, I, I give here row percentage. You can give column percentage also, no problem. Continue. Okay. You see now, now it is percentage is cal calculated row wise. That means the total is hundred. Uh, out of 100 people, 89.5 people are in the rural area are not infected from the disease. And 10.5 people are, that means out of every, out of every 100 people in the rural area, 11, about 11 people are infected from the disease. You see here, this is, this is calculated like this, row wise, row wise. I have given row, no? row wise, it is calculated like this, 228 people, out of uh, now the denominator is 100 in this case and in both in the, so total figure is 100 and 100. So it will be easier for us to tell. Now you see the out of 100 people, about 11 people are infected from the disease. And then in the urban area out of 100 people, 13 people are infected. That's, so picture is now completely different like this. Here we have more people in the rural area, but if you, if we make both the denominators equal to 100, then you can see that our more, urban people are more infected from the disease. So that's why percentage is a very, very important measure for dealing with categorical data. So you should always, you should give interpretation based on percentage. 
not based on the total figure, right? Now, go ahead. We have to go. Let us now uh, suppose. Now, from this figure, we we say that 12, 13 people for out of every hundred people, thirteen people are infected from the disease, and uh, eleven people from the rural area are infected from the disease. Now, is it true for the whole population? This is based on only 300 individuals. This result is, we have observed this based on only 300 individuals. Now, whether this is true for the whole population, our main purpose of statistics is to generalize the sample data to the whole population, right? So our purpose is to generalize. So I have to generalize to use by using statistical test. Now you see that this is, there is a difference. That means more urban people are infected from the disease rather than the rural people. So what um, now we have to generalize it for the whole population, whether this result is true or not. And for that, we have to go for statistical test. And here the appropriate test is chi-square test of independence of attribute. Chi-square test, uh, test of independence of attribute does not have much assumption like the parametric test. In parametric test, we uh, learned that uh, the data should follow normal distribution. But in uh, uh, this chi square test of independent attribute, no such assumption is required. Okay. So actually, chi, chi square test of independence, uh, I already told you, the chi square test of independence of attribute is used for categorical data. Okay. When both the data, both the variable are categorical then we have to use chi square test of independence. So what will be the, our null hypothesis here? Null hypothesis is that no relationship between location and there is no association. No null means no association. Then, so what will be our null hypothesis? That no association between location and uh, hypertension, blood pressure. That means whether a person is from rural area or urban area, it does not matter. His uh, chances of having the disease is same. Okay, that will that will be our null hypothesis. That means whether we don't have any relationship between our location, uh, place of residence, and this uh, systolic blood pressure. So a person maybe from rural area or urban area, it does not matter. Okay. So for that, I have to go to analyze descriptive statistics, cross steps. Okay. So it is already there, residential status in the rows and as systolic blood pressure in the columns. You can give systolic blood pressure in rows also, no problem. It, you, you can give, give this also. There is no such restriction is there, but I prefer to give the study variable in that columns. My main study variable is systolic blood pressure. Na? So it will be, for me, it will be easier for me to interpret when I give the study variable, main focus variable in columns, okay? So I find it easier to interpret. That's why I'm always giving my study variable, main variable in columns, okay? You can give it in rows also, no problem, okay? So I have given, the, my main study variable is systolic blood pressure. I have given it in columns. So you have to go to statistic, okay? Then go to chi-square, okay? Click continue, click okay. So this is, this, is the, this is the table and this is the chi-square value. So you have to check this one, this assumption. This assumption is very important. This is, you see this assumption, this assumption. You have to first check this. You see, zero percent cell have expected count less than five. Okay, that means this cell frequency. That means all the how many how many cell frequency are there? How many cells are there? Four cells. This one, this one, this one, this one. There are four cells are there. And how many cells have less than how? What is the percentage of cells that has count less than five? So zero percent. If it is more than twenty percent, then we we have to apply this Fisher exit test. Okay. If the percentage of sales that is less less than five percent, that means your chi square fails if your twenty percent of the sales have count less than five. 
okay then your chi square chi pearson chi square fails this is our main pearson chi square but it will fail when uh, 20 more 20 percent or more than 20 percent sales has count less than five so in that case we have to go for freezer exact test but here all the sales have uh, percentage more than five okay so we have to use this value this value so the, the what is the uh, this is the test statistics value and this is the p value right so uh, it shows that there is it is more than 0.05 it shows that it shows what it shows that the there is no relationship that means we have to accept the null hypothesis because p value is more than 0 0.05 that means we have to accept the null hypothesis that there is no relationship between real uh, location and systolic blood pressure that means we what we have seen here that marban people are more infected from the disease is not true in the whole population in that sample it is observed that um, urban people are more infected, but in the whole, if we study the whole population, then we are we, we see that we'll see that we will find that both the groups have equal hypertension. Okay, so the uh, to uh, I'll show you how to present this data. So we don't have to present all the things. Okay, so what we have to do, I usually do copy it to Excel, copy it to Excel paste it here, okay, then delete total, okay, then delete this total also, it is not, you can give it no problem, then here we have a cell, uh, chi-square, chi-square, degrees of freedom, and p below. We have to clap both the tables, okay? So I present like this. So it will be uh, chi square value is one point two one eight point two one eight degrees of freedom is always one, and it is point six point six four one point six four one. Okay, then. Give the borders. Give the borders. Okay. So copy this. You can present like this also. You can have your own way of presenting the data. Don't give all the information. It will have a lot of question then. Okay, then MSC design. This is because this P chi square value is for all the then degrees of freedom. Like this, you like this, you can present it. Okay. I prefer to do do like this. I prefer to do like this. I I uh, I usually do. I copy this uh, files to here. I copy these percentages to here. Five percent, like this. Okay. So you uh, by uh, using this way, you can present. Hello, how much time I have? Sir, uh, according to the um, schedule. Schedule, it is already over. Yes, yes, sir. And that's why I'm asking. Uh, how much time you need? <laughs> uh, we can uh, talk about 10 minutes more. I'll show you how to calculate the odds okay, ratio. Sir. Okay, sir. You can continue. There may be some Azurikas, questions also. Azurikas are already told about odds ratio. 
I'll show you how to care. Watch ratio is a very important measure in categorical data analysis. So this is, you see, uh, actually this is uh, very extensively used in medical studies. Okay, so it is called case and control. Case means, case means those people who have the disease or, and control means those people who don't have the disease. Okay, so case and control are here exposed and non-exposed. Exposed means suppose I want to study how much uh, how much uh, 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 cigarette smoking is influenced by uh, uh, smoking. So my main variable is whether a person is having hypertension or not. Hypertension is yes means case. Yes, yes are those people who have the hypertension and no means are those people who don't have the disease. And exposed means suppose smoker, which are uh, smoke. Uh, we want to see how much smoking affect the disease. So smoker means smoker is the exposed group and non-smoker is the non-exposed group. They are not exposed. You can in social science people can also use this uh, in your in their research because I believe that uh, in social science most of your data is categorical. Okay. So you, you, you can use this very widely in social science also, okay? Uh, so suppose, uh, so what is the formula for odds ratio? A, D, A into D, uh, it will be like this, A into D and B into divided by B into C. This is the formula, it's a very simple formula. It, it involves some probability theory also, but I, we are not going to discuss this. So this is the formula. Now let us uh, do, uh, calculate the uh, odds ratio by using SPSS. So by using logistic regression also, we can calculate the odds ratio, but I'll show you uh, how to do it in, in, uh, in uh, chi-square table also. Okay. Suppose what I do for calculating the odds ratio, what I usually do, I make a first make a cross tables. Okay. Suppose I want to study uh, the, I want to find out the odds ratio of, uh, odds ratio is actually a risk. What is the risk of the disease among the exposed people? Okay. What is the risk of the disease uh, among the smokers? So it's a, it, it is a risk, risk variable. So what we do, uh, we put systolic blood pressure call in columns and residence status is row, okay? So you see, urban people are more infected from the disease. In Australia, we'll always have a, we must always have a reference category. I'll show you. This unexposed group is called the reference category, okay? Here, we will find the all risk of the disease among the smoker in comparison to the non-exposed group. Suppose, suppose the also uh, show is calculated as suppose 2.5. What will be the, uh, the meaning of this? It will mean that in comparison to the non-smoker, non-smoker, the risk of the disease among the smoker is 2.5 times more among the smokers in comparison to the non-smokers. So non-smoker, we are going to calculate the risk of the disease among the smoker in comparison to the non-smoker. And that's why it is called a reference category. Reference, reference category, okay? so. Ian, before calculating the odds ratio, we will always have to uh, find out the which which will be our reference category. We have to select that one. So he, for selecting that, what I did uh, usually do, I find the cross, uh, this um, quantity table first. So here we see more people from the urban area are infected from the disease. Okay, that's why I use uh, I consider it as an exposed group. Okay, so uh, you, you may use some other method also. You can take rural, uh, so uh, urban as a reference category or rural as a reference category, no problem. But what I do usually, I find a, use a cross table to see which group is more infected from the disease. And I take that group as exposed group and the other group as unexposed group. This is my way of doing analysis, okay? 
you may take better. So here the, uh, in urban area, the more people are infected from the disease. So I use this group as an exposed group. And because in a rural area, the less people are infected from the disease. So I use this as an unexposed group, reference category, okay? So let us do the calculation. So what will my reference category? My reference category will be the rural area. And um, uh, this is the urban area is my exposed group. Okay, so go to analyze. Analyze descriptive statistics. Cross tab. Sorry, this is not the database. This is the main database. So uh, what will be the my variable? Systolic blood pressure and, and both the variables should be categorical and location. So this is the variable location. Okay. So go to analyze descriptive statistics, cross steps. So it is already there. So click it. Okay. I forgot to give one thing. So go to analyze, cross step, descriptive statistics. Go to statistics for giving. For calculating the odds ratio, you have to go to statistics. Then we have to select this one, risk. This, this is uh, with the help of this, we can find the odds ratio. Click here. So, also one more time, go to analyze descriptive statistics, cross steps. Okay. Then you have to give the variables, main variable in the columns. Usually, I prefer this is my way. So, and go to uh, statistics, then go to select risk okay click okay okay so this table is not necessary this is the chi square table not necessary right now so here you see odds ratio but this is not the odds ratio this this is a wrong odds ratio actually what happened you see in the table what is a a is the yes kiss and smoker here we have uh, in the first uh, in the columns we have to first give a yes okay so in the uh, we have, at first we have to give the case case people yes those people who is have the disease but here you see in the in here it is no so this yes should be here okay this yes should be here this should be here and urban should be urban should be here according to this table okay according to this table we have to follow this table now so here you see first of all we have is yes then no okay here it, it is different you see no is at first uh, yes is at why it is happening like this because i am giving no as zero so it is these categories are placed in ascending order from zero to one so what we have to do, I have to make yes as zero, no as one. So that uh, it comes here. And again, real, I have to make a zero. Urban has, uh, urban, we have to make zero. Or real, we have to make one. Then only we can do the test. I think everybody understand this. So I have to arrange the data like this table. I have to arrange the data like this table here. The disease people are at the first, then the non disease people. But in my table, it is different. So I have to make it. Why it is different? It is actually in an ascending order. I have given no to zero, one to yes. So it is, it is placed in an ascending order. First no, first zero, then one. So we have to make it, uh, we have to reverse the coding. Okay. We have to reverse the coding. And here also, we have to reverse the coding. So this can be done by using compute option. So we have, I have uh, sorry, record option. I have shown you the record option. So what will happen? Uh, so you see, this is the systolic blood pressure variable here. Zero means no, one means yes. What uh, now? What are going to do? We make uh, yeah, and, uh, we have to reverse this coding. We have to make yes people as zero. This becomes zero, and this becomes one. Okay. So what we have to do? We have to go to transform. Record. We, we can use both the variables. Record into same variable. Record into. Let us make it record into different variable. Okay. So the input variable is systolic blood pressure. We have to record this variable. Okay, 
and suppose new variable is SBP code. Here the code will be different. Okay, then change. So original variable is SBP and the new variable is suppose SBP code. This is the new variable where we, we are going to reverse our uh, categories. Okay, then all the new values. So this to, uh, to record categorical variables, this option we have to use. To, to, uh, to, uh, to, category, uh, to uh, code uh, continuous variable, we have to use this range option. And to record categorical variables, we have to use this option, okay? This is the old value and this is the new value, okay? So I have to put zero, zero means no, as one, okay? And one is zero, right? So zero becomes one, one becomes zero. Okay. So this is the this is the variable. Now you see the codes are reversed now. So go to variable view and give the value levels. Zero means yes. One means no. Okay. Now for the uh, for the uh, independent variable, for the exposure variable, we don't need to do this. We have an option. I will show you. Okay. So now you see we go to the, uh, this. So what will be our table? Our table will be like this. Yes first, no second. Then urban first. Here it will be urban because we are urban people are more infected. We have seen it, and this is rural. Okay. So it will be like this. So this will be our table. So go to analyzed descriptive statistics, cross steps. Uh, we have to give the new variable SBP code. You see, now you see, it is okay now. Yes, no, but urban should come here. Now, urban should come to this place. Rural should go to this place. We don't need to code it. There is an option for rows. So go to this, descriptive statistics, cross tabs, then format, click format. So row order, here it is ascending. So row is zero, so it, it comes first, urban is one, come second. So we make it different, that we make it descending. Descending means the higher value will come first, lower value will come second. So I'll show you one more time. For rows, there is an option, cross tabs, go to format, make it row, make it descending. Okay, continue. Okay. Okay. Now, now we have to go. Now you see the table, descriptive statistics, cross steps. I don't need this guy square test now. Continue. Okay. Now you see, Yes come first, no come second, exposure group come first. Uh, now, urban is the, rural is the reference category and urban is the, uh, this category, okay? So based on the odds ratio, this is the odds ratio, this is the odds ratio, okay? Uh, so it, it uh, less than one, that means there is a less uh, chances of hypertension. If it is more than one, then it has more chances of hypertension, okay? So this is the way. Uh, I think I should conclude now. Any questions? What is the answer? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. You can ask her if you have any questions. I think the participants don't have any questions. Okay, it's fine then.
So uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, you have already four sessions with us. Uh, I express my sincere gratitude to you for spending your valuable time with us. Uh, we have learned a lot from you, um, basically about the fundamental ideas of SPSS, and we have come to know about the importance of statistics in empirical research and different um, aspects of data analysis. So I express my thanks to you. I think we'll have another session in future also so that we can learn learn more from you. So thank you so much, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you everybody for this present hearing. Thank you. So participants will share the study materials in Google Classroom. And uh, now we have the lunch break. I think all are very hungry. Uh, after lunch at 3.30 p.m., we'll meet again. Um, your Zoom code will be given in the Zoom, uh, Google Classroom. So have a good lunch. Thank you. <laughs>